Hey guys, Justin here, coming at you with a Super Nintendo Collection video. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while now, and if you guys saw my room tour, uh, you saw that I purposely did not show a select portion of my Super Nintendo games. And the reason for that was because I was planning on doing this video, and I didn't want to like ruin the element of surprise for this video by uh, quickly skimming over all the games I wanted to show. Um, now, I did some rearranging back here because I got a new bookshelf. Um, I don't know if you guys can still see this shelf over here or not, but I have close to like 300 Super Nintendo games just on this bookshelf alone, and I'm not going to be showing any of those in this video. Um, there's some decent games over there, but I kind of want to focus on um, my favorite games and my more rare and more valuable games. Um, and I've actually got quite a few of them to show still, so I'm going to get right into it here. Um, I'm going to start out with some box games. Um, again, these are not all my box games. I have a bunch more down here, but these are just the ones that I feel are, you know, worthy of showing in this video. Um, so the first one I have here is The Lost Vikings, and I'll open this up and show you guys that it, um, it is complete. Um, I kind of uh, I kind of pieced this game together actually. Um, I'll just tell you the, the quick story about how I got this. Um, I ordered a really small Super Nintendo lot off of eBay last summer. Um, and in the bottom of the package was just this, the box for the Lost Vikings. And um, I had never heard of the game before, but I looked up some uh, some YouTube footage and it looked pretty cool. And I looked it up on eBay and saw that it was like, you know, a $10 game or something. Um, and I actually got lucky and came across an auction that had um, just the game and the manual. Um, and I won it for like $12 or $14, so I was able to complete this copy. Um, you can probably see the box isn't in the greatest shape. Um, it's a little rough, but that's just the way I got it. All right, and the next game is Killer Instinct. Um, again, I'll open this up um, and show you guys that this game is actually uh, very complete because it still has the uh, Killer Cuts soundtrack CD with it and uh, the manual here and the game. Um, I got this from the local play and trade here back when they were still in business. I think I paid ten dollars for it, which um, that's you know a little steep for a Super Nintendo game, but you know I mean it's in it's in nice shape, and uh, it did come with this uh, soundtrack CD, so I didn't mind paying ten dollars for that one. Um, it's a really fun uh, tournament fighter kind of game. Um, I don't want to say that it's you know better than Mortal Kombat, um, but it is it is really similar, and um, it's actually a really useful game because whenever I get new Super Nintendo controllers, I use this game to test them because it utilizes all the buttons on the controller. All right, and the next one I have here is another tournament fighter, and that's. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter. Um, I, I picked this up uh, more recently. Um, I think I might have overpaid a little bit for it. I think I paid um, $11 for it after shipping. Um, but, you know, it was a game I've been wanting, and it's a really fun game, so I didn't mind uh, paying that. Um, if you guys have never played this game before, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's, it's really similar to like Street Fighter, except it's with Ninja Turtle characters, and they did a really good job making this game. Um, so I definitely recommend this one. The next one I have is Donkey Kong Country. Um, it's kind of a funny story with this game, or the way I got it anyway. Um, it's actually got um, a lot of paperwork in here and uh, a poster. Um, but um, about a year ago, back when I first started um, going through and recollecting all the games that I played as a kid, um, I had a whole list of games that I wanted, um, but two of the games on that list for the Super Nintendo were uh, Cool Spot and Donkey Kong Country. And uh, I was looking on eBay and I came across this listing and it had a picture of Cool Spot, uh, but the title in the description said it was for uh, Super Nintendo Donkey Kong Country. So you know, I wasn't going to like bid or anything, but then I was like, you know what? Maybe I can get it cheap in whatever game it is, that's fine with me. Um, so I ended up winning it really cheap for like $3.50 and the next day I get a message from, from the seller and he says, oh hey, like sorry, I know there was a uh, mistake with the, the listing, it was actually supposed to be for a complete copy of Donkey Kong Country. So he said, you know, if you, if you want it, um, I'll be glad to send it to you, but if you want to cancel your order, that's fine too. And I was like, hey, you know, send me a complete copy of Donkey Kong Country for $3.50, I'll take that any day. And the next one I have here... Star Fox. Um, I got this game a long time ago. I think I bought it off of my friend actually. Um, and I never really played it too much because um, by the time I got this game, Star Fox 64 was out, and that was the one that I just played all the time. Um, but more recently, I, I finally stuck this game in my system and, and played through it and realized that it's almost exactly the same as the um, N64 version. 
Uh, obviously, the N64 version has you know like better graphics, and I'm, I'm sure that's not the only difference, but uh, really similar to the N64 version of the game. And um, I, I played through it, and um, actually it's a surprise of um, how good of a game that is. Um, okay, and the last two box games I'm going to show are actually um, I believe they are actually factory sealed. Um, I've got Tetris 2 and Williams Arcade's Greatest Hits. Now I don't know how you guys can see the. Uh, the seals on these, but um, I actually got these both from that lady downtown when she was um, first going out of business. When Ryan and I went in there and bought all of her NES and Super Nintendo games, and you know, had I known that she had you know sealed Super Nintendo games, I probably would have bought them long before she was going out of business. But then again, that's probably one of the reasons she went out of business. <laughs> Case in point, right there, I guess. But um, but yeah, obviously really cool to have uh, two sealed Super Nintendo games. I don't really plan on ever opening them, but. Um, really cool to have those for the collection. All right, and um, the next, all the rest of the games I'm going to show um, are all uh, just loose cartridges, um, and we'll, I'm actually going to show two of them first because they are both part of a series, and that's uh, Breath of Fire and Breath of Fire Two. Now, I actually got Breath of Fire Two first. I got it from the Play and Trade here when they were in business. I got a good deal on it, um, and uh, played through it last winter and. It's a really, really great RPG, really unique RPG. Um, the thing with this game is, it's so long. Like, this game took me so long to beat. Like, probably one of the longest games I've ever played. Definitely the longest game I've ever, ever, ever played on the Super Nintendo. Um, you know, longer than, like, Final Fantasy III and all those other games that are known for being the longest games on the system. Um, but, yeah, really, really great game. Totally worth it. There's a lot of, like, weird religious cult references in this game and stuff, but... Other than that, um, it's a really great game, and um, this one, um, after I beat that one, I, I picked this one off, up off of eBay. Um, I, after you know, taking so long to beat that one, I was really kind of you know, done with Breath of Fire for a while. Um, so I, I started playing through this one. Uh, you know, I didn't get too far through it, um, but I do definitely plan on picking this up again someday and playing through this one. I'm sure it's you know just as good, if not you know, almost just as good as the second one. So. And uh, here's another RPG, uh, hence the name, uh, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Um, I don't really know how Nintendo was able to take Mario and put him in an RPG and make it work, but they totally did with this game. This is an awesome game. And I know this was kind of like a precursor to like uh, some other Mario RPGs like Paper Mario and stuff like that, but um, unfortunately I don't think I ever beat this game. Um, I always... I. I picked it up and played through it a couple times and I'd always get to the same spot and I'd get stuck. I couldn't figure out where to go. So I let Ryan borrow the game and he got to the same spot and couldn't figure out where to go. So it's probably just something easy that we're missing. I'm sure um, I'll pick it up and uh, play through it fully someday. But um, really, really cool RPG here. The next two are, all, um, are also part of a series that I will show together and that's uh, Final Fight 2 and Final Fight 3. Um, I actually got this one first. Um, I got it in that Super Nintendo lot that I bought from that lady downtown. Um, unfortunately, you guys can probably see it's the label's got a pretty bad nick right there. Um, that's the way it came, which is unfortunate because it's you know this is a pretty pretty valuable game. Um, now, and then I went ahead and picked up this one off of eBay, Final Fight 2, just so I could complete the collection. I, I do have uh, Final Fight 1 too, obviously, but that game's so common I'm not even going to bother showing it. And uh, I know they made a, a Final Fight guy for the Super Nintendo too. That's uh, probably the rarest one, or definitely the rarest one of all, and the most expensive. It's like a $50 game. Um, I guess when they made, I don't know if it was Final Fight one or if it was two or three, even that um, they didn't have the character guy in it. You know, the classic character guy. And I guess gamers got mad, and um, so Capcom was like, "Hey, I'll just put out a new game um, featuring guy." And they made Final Fight guy. So I got to get that one still. Haven't actually played these ones too much. Um, I was kind of disappointed that the Final Fight 1 is not multiplayer, so I just kind of was hesitant to play these two. I'm sure these two are multiplayer and better than the first one, but um, I'm sure I'll play through them someday. Alright, the next one is Super Punch-Out. Um, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was one of my favorite games on the NES, uh, so I really wanted to get this one. Uh, I, I didn't play too much of it. I guess it's similar to the NES one, um, but I was kind of disappointed when I got it, if you guys can see it. It is missing one of the clips on the top, so it's not in the greatest condition. I mean, the cartridge still holds together fine, but um, I don't know. It's missing that clip, and um, you can't, you know, you can't switch that out because the clips on the Super Nintendo games are on the the front of the cartridge with the label, so you can't like switch them out or anything. 
Um, but I guess that's what I get for not reading eBay descriptions. Um, it clearly said it in the description, I just didn't read it, and I got, got a good deal in the game, and um, I don't know. Alright, um, I'm not going to be cliche and save this next game for the end, I'm just going to go ahead and show it now. Um, it's Earthbound. Um, I got this last summer from a local flea market store here. Um, some guy had traded it in. Uh, he was a collector, so he knew what it was worth, and the guy, uh, the owner of the store, said he paid accordingly for it, which probably means he paid like $20 for it. Um, but I bought it off of him for $75, um, which is not a bad deal for this game. I think it goes pretty consistently on eBay from you know, 100 to 120 depending. Um, so 75 is not a bad deal. It's in good condition. Uh, I played through this one. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this game is so rare because back when it first came out, nobody wanted it. Um, and I don't want to harp on, you know, a $100 game, but I can kind of see why. This, it was a really obscure um, idea for an RPG. And, you know, I did play through, I did beat it, uh, but it's, it's just such an obscure concept for an RPG that I can kind of see why people didn't like this game back in the day. Speaking of RPGs that uh, weren't the greatest, if you can even call this an RPG, it's Illusion of Gaia. Um, I was so jacked up when I found this at a thrift store uh, last year, and so disappointed when I started playing this game. Um, a lot of people consider this an RPG, and I don't by any means consider this an RPG. Um, you know, there's no like variable leveling system, and I guess what I mean by that is you could you could give this game to five different people, and when they all got to the last level all of their characters would be, you know, the same strength and have the same abilities, so uh, I'm not a big fan of this game. I did beat it, but not a big fan of this game. Alright, next one I got here is Kirby Superstar, 8 games in 1. Um, I got this on that first Craigslist video I have uploaded on this channel, um, and I, I didn't, honestly, didn't play too much of it. Um, it did look like a cool game when I did play of it, and the graphics in this game are absolutely amazing. Uh, in my opinion, definitely, uh, by a long shot, the best graphics on the Super Nintendo. And, um, see, I don't know if you can see, um, it looks like a Super FX chip game, but it's actually not a Super FX chip. It's a different graphics chip, um, which apparently is even better than the, uh, the Super FX chip. So, um, just all the colors and the animations in this game are absolutely amazing. Alright, and what kind of RPG collector would I be if I didn't have Chrono Trigger, right? Um... I got this uh, last summer. Um, this girl I knew I, uh, at her apartment, I saw she had a box of Super Nintendo games, and I asked her whose they were, and she said that, oh, they're my parents. They're looking to get rid of them. So I ended up buying a bunch of them off of her, or off of her parents, I guess. And um, I was so worried that this game was going to be overrated because, you know, I hear all the time, oh, Chrono Trigger, you know, best Super Nintendo game, best RPG of all time. And, like, I was like, oh, like, how good can it be, you know? Um, but after I got it, I uh, played through it with Ryan, and, I mean... I don't know if it, you know, the best RPG of all time, that, that's a stretch, but it's definitely, definitely a great, great game. It was, um, you know, I was really glad to find out that, um, it, you know, it, it's not overrated at all. Um, it's definitely um, worth every penny. Alright, and the next two I'm also going to show together. Uh, it's Castlevania 4 and Castlevania Dracula X. Um, now, I picked this up from... Uh, a retro store when I was uh, down in Wisconsin. Um, I got a good deal on it. I paid like $15 for it. Um, so I was really excited about that. I was never a big Castlevania guy though. I, n I never played it as a kid so I never had much nostalgia for it uh, which is unfortunate because I, I, mean, I know they're great games and everything and I know there's a lot of people that really enjoy them. Um, I was just never really that into them. Um, but I'm still, I mean this game especially, I'm really really excited to have my collection. Um, I got this in that same same way, place I got that Kirby game in that Craigslist deal. Um, this was the one that supposedly didn't work, but it was actually the Super Nintendo that was the problem, so I got a great deal on this game. Um, really excited to have both of these games. Um, it's just unfortunate that you know I don't have much nostalgia for them. Alright. Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Um, this is a really cool arcade beat-em-up. Um, the only complaint I have about this game is, though, it's really short. Like, it seemed even, to me, it even seemed shorter than the... Uh, and the NES, you know, all the turtles on the NES are uh, remembered, you know, the second one, the arcade one, and the third one, the Manhattan Project, anyway. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm just, I was looking for this game, and I really wanted it for my collection. It, it is, a, you know, it is a fun game. It's just, you know, it just seemed a little short to me. All right, here we go. Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Um, and I actually do have the manual for this game here. Um, 
I, I had the uh, million seller version of this game actually, and then when I uh, found this one, um, I switched out mine. I'd just rather have the, you know this one in the, the million seller version. Um, now, I don't, you know, what can I really say about this game that hasn't already been said? Um, the only thing I can really do is tell you guys a story. I still remember the first time I beat this game. Um, it was a summer, and I, I was way younger. It was a summer day, and uh, I was downstairs playing, and I was on Ganon. I was on the, the final boss, and I, I knew it was the end. I could just sense that it was the end. And all of a sudden, my mom started screaming for me upstairs. Uh, we had, a, like, a family get-together going on at the beach that day. And uh, she's like, we're going to be late. You got to get up here. Get up here. We got to go. We got to go. And I was just, like, begging her. I was like, please, please, let me, you know, f like, five minutes, three minutes. You know, I got to I gotta beat this. And um, when she finally came downstairs and saw what I was doing, and I explained to her, I was like, yeah, this is, I'm about to beat the game that I've been playing for months. You know, she, she let me have my, uh, my five minutes of fame. So... <laughs> Alright, um, the next two I'm not really going to talk that much about, um, it's uh, Earthworm Jim and Earthworm Jim 2. Um, I remember playing this Earthworm Jim 1 on the Genesis back in the day, um, it was a lot of fun, definitely really, uh, really quirky, um, you know, weird uh, idea for games, but um, they're not bad, they're, I mean, <laughs> they're pretty comical actually, just uh, really cartoony and comical, um, that's really all I can say about them, I haven't really played either of these too much, but I'm, I'm still glad to have them. All right, uh, this one I really can't say anything about. It's uh, Demon's Crest, and I just recently got this in that, that huge like Eye of the Tiger haul that I had. Um, and I haven't I haven't stuck it in and played it or anything yet. Um, a few uh, YouTubers on here, t you know, uh, compared it to like uh, Ghosts and Goblins, or I guess Ghouls and Ghosts. Um, and uh, I'm hoping it's not as hard as the, either of those two games, but um, I'll definitely uh, stick this in and, and try it out. Um, another one I got in that Eye of the Tiger deal, uh, which I have not played yet, is Contra 3 The Alien Wars. Uh, I'm really glad to have this game. Um, I know it's, you know, a highly coveted game. Um, I, once again, you know, I know a lot of people have nostalgia for Contra, but I, I never played it when I was younger, so I, I really don't have that much nostalgia for it. And I, and I, I know they're great games, I just, you know, <laughs> never really had too much motivation to put them in and, you know, play through them. Alright, the next two I'll also show together. Uh, I guess they're somewhat related. Um, it's Mario's Missing and Mario's Time Machine. Uh, both Mario games and both educational games. Um, this one, um, I don't even think I've ever played this game before. I, I have it on the NES and I, I beat that one. Um, you know, now it's it's geared more towards younger audiences, I guess. So, so I mean, it's not like a difficult game or anything. It's just um, kind of tedious, actually. And uh, this one, um, I played a little bit of it. I remember... <laughs> I remember one weekend I rented this as a kid, and I remember being so disappointed. I, w I was way too young to, you know, grasp any of the concepts in this game. Um, so I got it thinking it was like, you know, a Mario game, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And my mom was trying to help me, like, answer all the, the history questions and whatnot in this game. And, I don't know, it, it ruined my weekend. I mean, I I'm glad to have it now, I guess. And now, it, you know, now it's easy. But uh, back then, I was, I was just way too young for it. Alright, uh, Super Mario All-Stars, um, I'm still looking out for the, uh, the Super Mario All-Stars with the Super Mario World on it, um, I still gotta get that one. Um, this one, uh, really the only reason I, I got this game was to play through the Lost Levels, which was, for you that don't know, the original uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 that wasn't released in America. Um, and uh, I did so on this game, but the problem with this game is, is if you guys are used to the controls on the NES versions of the games, uh, this game is like impossible to play. Um, it's so frustrating. The controls are so off from the NES versions of the games. Uh, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, all the graphics are updated and everything to 16-bit, but it's just it's so hard to control. It's too frustrating for me to even um, attempt to play through the original Mario Bros. on that game. All right. The next one I have here is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. And if I'm not mistaken, this was actually the first game that I had for my system. I think it even might have been a pack-in with my Model 2 system when I first got it. Um, so naturally, because it was like my only game, I played it a lot. I remember my cousin and I uh, played through and, and beat this game, and I'm sure we had a lot of fun with it back in the day, but looking back on it now, I just kind of think this is a really childish take on a Mario game, and uh, it just it doesn't do it for me anymore. I don't know how you guys feel about this game, but it just seems a little childish to me. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm sure it was fun back in the day, but not so much anymore. Um, here's a game I can't really say too much about, again, that hasn't already been said. Super Mario Kart. Um, I didn't have this game for the longest time. 
by the time I got this, I was already playing Super Mario Kart 64, so I never this one never really saw much action in my system. Um, but I'm glad to have it for you know collecting purposes. All right, another racing game actually, and I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I did a Genesis video on it. But that's Rock and Roll Racing. Um, just an awesome, awesome game for the system. In my top five Super Nintendo games, actually, awesome, awesome soundtrack on this game. Um, if you guys want to know more about this, check out my uh, Rock and Roll Racing uh, Sega Genesis video I did on this. Okay, now this next game is probably the rarest game that I own. Uh, it's not the most expensive game that I own, but it's you know definitely the rarest game that I own. And uh, that's Harvest Moon. Um, a lot of people don't even know this game exists. I, I still I don't know if this is the the first Harvest Moon that came out because I know they made them on the Game Boy too. I don't know which one came first. Um, I'm assuming this one, but I could be wrong. Um, and I remember I am a huge fan of the N64 Harvest Moon. That's um, up there as one of my favorite games of all time. Um, so I picked this one up back in the day for like 50 bucks off of eBay. And uh, I didn't play too much of this one. I mean, it was kind of uh, inferior to the uh, Harvest Moon 64. Um, so I never really got too much into this one, but I'm so glad to have it because this game has gone up in value tremendously since I got it. Um, like I said, definitely the rarest game I own, but uh, not the most valuable. All right, now the next five I think I have are um, all related as well. Um, this is Mega Man 7. Um, I got this off of eBay um, last year and I think I paid retail for it, uh, which back then was like $40, $45. Um, I'm really glad I did get it when I uh, back then though because uh, since then Mega Man games have gone up in value tremendously. Um, this is no longer you know like a $40 game, I think it's up in $50, $60 range. Um, a uh, really, really fun game though. You know that was that was kind of in the period where I was like, uh, you know, pay whatever I I have to pay to get the games I want to play, and I bought this game to play it. Um, and it is a great game. You know, um, taking you know the original six Mega Man's on the NES and you know just updating the graphics, adding some new features. There's like a store in this game you can buy stuff. That was a really cool aspect of this game. Um, it took me forever to beat though because um, with these Mega Man games, I, I don't let myself beat the game unless I collect all the items. And uh, then I can go beat it, and you know I'm not, I don't look anything up online or anything. I can look at the manual if I have it or whatever. But but <laughs> that's about it. So it took me forever to beat this game, but I finally did it 100%. Um, all right, now this one, Mega Man X. Um, I've had this game for a long time. I mean, I don't. Um, I remember playing this back in the day, and I could never beat it. I always got to the final boss and couldn't figure out how to beat it. But now that I'm a little, you know, a little older, a little wiser, I uh, picked it up recently and played through it and beat this one, uh, which inspired me to get this one, Mega Man X2, which is a pretty valuable game. Um, I'm glad I got it when I did because I got, you know, it's got some some writing on the back and on the front, but it's not on the label. So I just ha I just haven't gotten around to getting a magic eraser and taking that off. Um, but I will be able to do that. And uh, I, I think I paid like $35 for this, and um, you know, as with the rest of the Mega Man games, this one has uh, increased in value pretty significantly. Um, awesome, awesome game as well. I think, yep, this is a Super FX chip game as well. Um, along with the next one I have, which is Mega Man X3. Now, I wish I had a better condition copy. You guys can probably see that label is pretty messed up on the top there. and I mean, I can always switch out the back, but that label's messed up too. Um, this is probably my favorite Mega Man X game. Um, I just I just have so much nostalgia. I remember playing this at my babysitter's house when I was a kid, and uh, just an awesome awesome game. Also a Super FX chip game, and uh, this is increased tremendously in value as well. I think this is up to I saw some going recently on eBay. Uh, completed auction listings uh, for anywhere from like sixty five to eighty, and I think I paid forty for this one. Um, obviously, you know, back when I bought it, I wasn't taking condition into consideration. I want, you know, I wanted it to play it. I, I wasn't a collector at that time. I just wanted to play the game. So it's unfortunate that I um, don't have a better condition copy, but I will get one eventually. I will trade up. And the last game I have um, is Mega Man Soccer. Um, this one, this isn't a real valuable game. I think it's like a ten dollar game. Um, probably just because it's it's a soccer game with Mega Man. I mean, it's not. I didn't play too much of this game, um, you know, it's just just a Mega Man soccer game, I guess, is <laughs> really all I can say about that one. Alright, and the next two I will also show together, that's Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3. Um, now, I, I do have Final Fantasy Mystic Quest as well, but that game is so 
terrible compared to these two that I'm not even going to show that one. Um, this is the one I have a lot of nostalgia for. I used to play this at my babysitter's house all the time before I got it for my own system. Um, <laughs> I have no idea how I ever got so far in this game. I, I never beat it as a kid, but I got uh, I got really far. I got to like the underworld and everything. And uh, I was way too young to understand a lot of the, the elements of like RPG games. I mean, I understood like the fighting and like the, the magic system and like the leveling system a little bit, but I had I had no idea how to, you know, um, buy armor and equipped armor and weapons and stuff like that, which, <laughs> so I'm really surprised I got as far as I did in this game. And then uh, more recently I played through it. I think Ryan and I beat this game. Um, really, really awesome RPG. I don't know if the Final Fantasy series will ever die, but... And then uh, Final Fantasy 3, after I beat this one, I picked this one up and played through this one. Uh, you know, really long game, as I said before when I was talking about Breath of Fire. Um, but uh, really, really awesome game as well. Um, I don't know, I might get hated on for this, but I'm going to have to give the, uh, the better game to Final Fantasy 2. Um, again, that's probably just, you know, speaking from the nostalgia I have for them. Uh, don't get me wrong, they are both awesome, awesome games. Alright, uh, this next one I have, I really can't say too much about because I have not played much of it at all, and that's Wolfenstein 3D. Um, I, I don't have Doom for the Super Nintendo, that's definitely on my wish list, uh, but I do have Doom on the 32X, and I know this one's you know very similar to Doom. Uh, I think it's made by the same people, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I know both games kind of like date back to the old you know PC days, uh, PC gaming. Um, so I really can't say much about this. You know, First person shooters on the Super Nintendo are kind of like, eh. Um, just because of their graphical capabilities, but I'm sure at the time this game was pretty revolutionary. All right, got Act Racer. Um, now I I don't know too much about this game. I haven't played it too much. When I first got it, uh, I let Ryan play around with it a little bit, and uh, he said it was uh, actually a really good game. Um, I don't know. I think it's an RPG. I know it has some RPG elements to it, and I know it's kind of like a side scroller as well. Um, and I know they made an Act Racer too, which I'm keeping my eye out for. Um, so I'm definitely probably going to stick this in and give this game uh, a good chance in the near future. All right, Double Dragon Five: The Shadow Falls. Now, when I got this game, um, I think I, I this was in a video um, of a deal I did with that guy at the flea market um, downtown, and uh, I was so excited to put this game in my system. You know, like arcade beat 'em up. You know, like the all the Double Dragons on the NES, and uh, it's a tournament fighter. And when I found that out, I don't even think I played it for 30 seconds. I just shut it off. I mean, I mean that was probably kind of harsh. I should probably give this game a, a better chance. It's you know it's probably not that bad. But once I found out it was a tournament fighter, I was like, oh, so disappointed that I didn't even I didn't even play it for more than 30 seconds. Um, all right, now this game, I'm definitely gonna get hated on for this because I honestly do not like this game. This is the one I'm playing through right now, and it's Secret of Mana. Um, I just I don't know what it is about this game, like, if anything, I believe, you know, this is one of the more overrated games for the system, um, I just, the only good thing I can really say about this game is that it, it is multiplayer, you can have, you know, two people, and you can even have three people playing if you've got a, one of these multi-taps, a Super Nintendo multi-tap, you can actually play three players in this game, but I just have so many complaints with this game, from the hit detection, to the magic system, to, you know, the leveling, it just... I don't, I, I don't know. I really, I really am not enjoying this game. Um, it, it's got a lot of hills and valleys. It started out really slow. Once you got multi, once you got another character and you could play multiplayer, it wasn't as bad. Kind of went downhill again. It kind of went up for a while. And and now Ryan and I are so close to beating this game. We can tell um, we're on like the we got, It's got to be like the last part. And uh, we just have no motivation to like finally finish it. Um, which is kind of unfortunate. You know, I don't want to harp on it because it's you know supposed to be one of the better games for the system. But I just honestly don't like it that much. Um, now, I didn't actually mean to show these one after the other uh, because they're actually not related, uh, but it's Secret of Evermore, and I've got the manual for this game and, uh, and two different maps. I don't know what is what here, but, um, uh, you know, a lot of people think they're, like, they're related. Um, I don't even know. I think they're made by the same people or the same company, but um, I, from what I know, the games aren't related um, at all. This was this was made after Secret of Mana, um, and uh, I don't know if, if I know the gameplay is really similar. Obviously, the the title of the game is really similar, and I have not even put this one in my system yet. Actually, I just I had the manual and the maps before I even had the game, which kind of inspired me to get it. I got a good deal on eBay, so I picked it up. Uh, was planning to play through it after Secret of Mana, but <laughs> after how much I didn't like Secret of Mana, I don't know. It's it's iffy. 
All right, we've got just a few more here. Um, no, I, I already showed my Donkey Kong Country 1 uh, complete, but I actually I have Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3 here. I've got the manual for this one as well. Um, now, when I played through Donkey Kong Country 1 when I first got it, I got so frustrated. I do not remember that game being that frustrating at all. I, I just, I don't know how I ever, like, tolerated that game when I was younger. It's, it's so frustrating. I, I did beat it, but it, it took me way longer than it should have. Um, so I ended, up, I ended up picking these two up, but didn't play them because I was, I'm still frustrated from that game. I, mean, I, I played this one a little bit. Um, it, it didn't. It was not. It's not. It's not a bad game by any means. None of them are. It's just. It was so frustrating that it kind of deterred me from these two for a while. I'm sure I'll beat them eventually. But all right, I've got one final game, and you know, I, I like I said, I didn't want to be cliche and, and save Earthbound for the end um, because you know that's my most expensive game. Um, but um, I decided I would save my favorite game of all time for any system uh, for the end of this video. And are you ready? Super Metroid, got the manual for it here. I just have so much nostalgia for this game. I remember um, back, I used to go to a babysitter um, you know, every day and uh, her son um, had all these old video games. And Well, actually they weren't old at the time. This was back when they were like newer. Um, but he used to play through them all the time. And I remember just sitting there, I would sit there and watch him play this game over and over. And just watching it was almost as entertaining as actually playing it. And, you know, he had Nintendo Power, and he knew where all, like, the, all the items and all the secrets were, so I, I just kept watching people play this game, and eventually I could, I could beat the game myself, you know, 100%, and get the best ending, um, you know, get to see Samus in her uh, bikini or whatever, um, and uh, I'll, I'll still do it, like, and lately on YouTube, I've been watching uh, Let's Plays and speedruns of this game. There's some people that are just absolutely amazing at this game. There's an awesome group of guys here on YouTube that do, like, speedrun tutorials. They're so entertaining to watch those videos. Uh, this is not the original manual that came with the game. Um, I actually got this off of eBay recently. It was like a dollar seventy-five with free shipping. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll pay that for my uh, my favorite game of all time any day. Now, um, that was all the games uh, that I wanted to show. Um, I there there are a few on my wish list that I'm hoping to get really soon. Um, you know, I want to get uh, Luffy One, Fortress of Doom, uh, Luffy Two. You know, uh, two supposedly great RPGs that I don't have. Um, also, I'm on the lookout for uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3. Um, that would complete my Kirby collection for the system. I only showed Superstar. I do have the other two Kirby games um, for the system. Um, but, you know, Kirby's Dream Land 3 is a you know, pretty hard to come by, pretty valuable game. So th those three are definitely on my wish list, um, among others. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around and watching my collection video. Um, if any of you have a Super Nintendo collection, um, the uh, by all means, do a video and show it. I mean, I guess I can kind of make this like an open tag. I'd love to see your guys' Super Nintendo collection. Um, you know, obviously my favorite system, um, the system I have the, the most nostalgia for, the system I have the most valuable collection for. And, uh, you know, making these, making videos, collection videos like this is fun. They're fun to watch. I had fun making this one. Um, so, yeah, by all means, if you guys got a Super Nintendo collection, um, let's see what you got. And uh, thanks for sticking around and watching mine. Until next video, guys, take it easy.